If you recently lost your job and your health coverage due to the COVID-19 pandemic, and you think you may be eligible for Medicare, you probably have more questions than answers right now. Statewide Insurers Group, All Things Medicare, can help you with that. We can provide the guidance and the answers that you need to get the benefits you may be eligible for. Don't let this time of uncertainty jeopardize your eligibility for your Medicare benefits. Remember, relationships matter. Call Statewide Insurers Group today for the answers that you need now. 316-8166. Being prepared and trained is the best way to keep your family safe. The best way to be prepared is to learn from those who've spent a lifetime protecting us. Barnes Safety and Consulting LLC offers concealed carry classes with instructors who are law enforcement officers active and retired with more than 100 years of law enforcement experience. Monthly classes are taught year round with private classes and special group rates available. Classes are $75 and held in the Bailey area. Call or text 1-800-653-0643. Get your concealed carry permit and avoid becoming a victim. And welcome back. We have JP joining us again this morning for the K Files. Good morning. Thank you for having me back. And I have to tell him thank you for the biscuit. He brought us a cheese biscuit. Great biscuit. One of my favorite yes. places to go. Yes. And y'all see this place advertised on WHIG. Um, I don't know if the commercials played it yet this morning, but anyway, uh, JD's uh, Grocery and Grill over there by the. Um, JR's it's right beside JR's maintenance and it's on Atlantic Avenue, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Atlantic, it is Atlantic Avenue. Avenue. Yeah. So anyway, patronize them. Um, we get gas from there too. Their gas is cheaper. And they pump it for and you. And they'll pump it. Mm -hmm. Golly, I'm all for that. I'm all about that. But anyway, welcome to the K Files. Um, and as I said, JD's going to be my co host today. Um, Want to talk to you a little bit about, um, and I'm going to put you on the spot today because I'm going <laughs> to. I want to talk a little bit about what you do and how important it is to have your concealed carry. We'll, we'll open up with, with that too because we had a discussion yesterday about that in a meeting I was in and we were all laughing because one one man said, look, I, I if you don't see my gun, I got it somewhere. I got it around my ankle in a holster, I guess, around your ankle. Mm -hmm. Can't see it, but I've got it. He said, I'm going to carry, and and I said, well, I have my concealed carry, and, and I have my pocketbook, and he said, I bet there's, I bet you're packing in that pocketbook, and so, you know, it's important today, and, and you know, that we have this, so how important is it? You know, I think about it <clears throat> sort of like your wallet. Um, my wife will tell you, when I roll out of the bed in the morning, the first thing I do, I put my sleeping shorts on and my handgun, a small handgun, goes in my pocket. Um, if I'm on the lawnmower cutting grass, I've got a gun in my pocket. And I tell people, just stop and think, the highway patrol could be chasing a murder suspect, he crashed in your front yard, yeah. and here you are on a lawnmower. It could happen here right now. Um, Rocky Mountain Police Department could be chasing a murder suspect and they run in this building mm -hmm. right now. It could happen. You are so right. You are so right. And you have an obligation to keep yourself safe yes. and everyone around you. You yes. have that obligation. So that's that's my take on it. Yeah, mine too. And so you said you can take them in the bank now. You can. You can't take them in the bank. You mm -hmm. can't take them in the courthouse. No. Get rid of it. Um, my Law husband. Law enforcement uh, yeah. facilities you can't. 
DOC facilities you can't. Okay. Um, school properties you can't. Okay. My husband has <laughs> well, used to go to some concerts and he would forget to take his knife out of his pocket. I, 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 he's left more knives and lost more knives in bushes whatever I'm just gonna lay it here and we'd forget to go back and get it you know um, so anyway there are some venues that you cannot have uh, a gun but um, you, you need to have something and now at night in your house would you wouldn't you recommend that you not keep the gun way across the room somewhere well it would be dependent you know do you have children in your home Right. Do you have children that would possibly frequent your home? Right. You know, if I lived alone and I knew that children were not going to be in and out of my house, um, it's probably more acceptable for me to have a gun easily accessible throughout my home. Mm -hmm. um, I do have younger children at home, so I have to be mindful about where I keep that weapon, where I keep that ammunition, mm -hmm. and that I keep it secured. Yes, absolutely. But I feel like at night, you know, I could look up and hopefully not, I have an alarm system and that's something else I want to talk about. We need to have an alarm person come on as a guest. Okay. I think we need to do that on this show. I think it would fit in well with the K yes, files because we're trying to, mm -hmm. you know, but you can get an alarm system fairly inexpensively. Yes. I mean, they're not that expensive, but I don't want to look up and, and a man standing in my well, okay, outside the window. Well, I just want to be able to reach over in my, you know, somewhere around me and get the gun. I don't want it to be a mile from me. I've got an alarm system that also has cameras inside and outside of my home. Mm -hmm. My phone can vibrate if a vehicle turns into my driveway. Mm -hmm. If somebody goes to my front door and knocks, my phone vibrates. I have a picture of them. If you come to my house and leave, I've got your license plate. I've got vehicle description. I know how many people were in your vehicle. And it's not from a paranoia standpoint. What if something happens at my home? I have suspect information. Mm -hmm. I have suspect vehicle information. I have a lot of things that, that I can give to the sheriff's office to help them solve this crime. Mm -hmm. And look, you're talking a thousand bucks. I mean, that's, Golly, that's, that's kind of inexpensive it to really uh, is. protect yourself. It is. And you might not be home. You're at the beach that's or right. you're at you're at the mountains or you're on a trip and you know, you want to know what's going on at your home. It's kind of cool that you can it's really find neat. out. Mm -hmm. And, and people are doing that now and I, I think we have implemented that. My husband's been playing with it. I don't know if he's got it fin finished, but he's doing some of those more elaborate things to our system now. But um, anyway, we're going to have somebody on to really talk about some of the things that you can, you can do um, along those lines. But I do want to thank Barnes Safety. You can, for being a uh, host on the show, being a sponsor of the show, you've been with us since day one. Now, he, you do teach concealed carry classes and safety and all of that. I do. And something I've never mentioned before, but I've been doing it for years. If someone attends my class mm -hmm. and they bring a church bulletin mm -hmm. from the Sunday before, it's an automatic $25 off the cost what? of the course. Yes. And we've been doing that from the very beginning. Also, if a pastor will reach out to me and say, look, you know, we want to start a security detail or security team, mm -hmm. I'll do two uh, members for free for that church. Wow. And we've been doing that for about three or four years now. Well, I recommend that you call JP and um, get your concealed carry. I do recommend it and he does too. So give him a call and, and uh, the classes, you know, to me, when I took it, it was fun, but it was serious too. You know, you can, as I said earlier, you heard me say that before, you know, you can combine, you can have, get a group, get your friends, a group mm -hmm. of girls, mm -hmm. guys, whatever, night out, you know, be fun. So day out whenever you want to take it so uh, they can get on your schedule. When do you teach? We, typically, your next class? we typically do one public class a month. 
Okay. My next class is uh, September 18th. But, you know, I've got three private classes booked mm -hmm. for September. Okay. Um, one is a family of seven out of Wendell. Um, you know, it might be a, a Sunday school class that says, look, you know, we want to do a small group, a small family, um, people from work. I see this a lot with ladies. Mm -hmm. They don't want to come to the class. They want to keep it small. They want to keep it hands-on, you know. Um, they don't want to be in front of anyone. We're embarrassed because we can't shoot good. And I realize, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it is. But um, that's a lot of my business is mm -hmm. private classes teaching concealed carry. Yeah. It is. Mm -hmm. Well. And we'll work around your schedule. If you want to break it up over two nights during the week, if you want it on a Sunday, if you want it on a Saturday night, we'll work with you now, to make it happen. My daughter wants to shoot. Mm hmm on a range. Mm -hmm. Can somebody rent your place or how, how does that work if they just want to shoot, have somewhere to shoot? Right. Well, I do have a range um, just outside of Bailey and um, we don't really rent it to the public per se. Okay. But if I had a group that I needed to go and maybe supervise and right. um, do some firearms training, that would be fine. But as far as just an open-ended range, open to the public, while well, I'm not there, yeah. I, oh, no, no, I, no. I we would definitely want you to be Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> From a liability standpoint, it's just, oh, yeah. it's just not... Oh, you yeah. Know. When I said that, I meant, can they go and shoot? Absolutely. Can you get a group or can you, you know, because she's wanting to really shoot. And she's got it in her blood now because when we took classes, she, was, we, she took it with me, several of us. And... She um, hit the bullseye, and she and, uh, in there with all these men. Mm -hmm. She had the top, you know, the closest one. She doesn't and have the any whole time. bad habits established <laughs> that you have to correct. I see that a lot of times with people who have never held a handgun or fired a weapon. There's no bad habits to correct. So you're teaching them the right way right out of the gate mm -hmm. and they'll tear the bullseye out of a target every time. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. But anyway, and I was somewhere all over the page, but anyway. Um, but don't come near me if you're not supposed to be because I will find a way. I will get you. But anyway, I will do it. <laughs> All right, well, let's get started into our, let's first say that, uh, let's talk a little bit about the K-Files and what we're about and, and the team cold case, um, which is the board that oversees the K-Files. And um, we have some wonderful board members that care, that really care. Um, and um, what we're after is tips from the public and it is anonymous for those of you I say this every week because there are people we're getting lots of new viewership people are saying Sandra I love that show I went to a um, a state auction uh, at a lady's house that passed away that I knew and there were a lot of people there and this lady said I love that show I started watching it my friend told me about it and I just love it I'm all into it so um, I like that. I like that. So I figured some of the people that might have tips might have just started watching as well. So 406-6736 is the hotline number. It is anonymous. And please call. Um, I just feel like it's, you know, if you know something, as JP always says, if you know something, say something. Absolutely. Please. So uh, we'll be talking about individual cases each week is what we talk about. And we go over some of the cases again down the road in case some new people are watching or in case you have decided that you're getting close to wanting to do this, to call. So um, anyway, let's take our break because we're right upon it before we get into a case. And we will be right back with you on the k -Pops. If you recently lost your job and your health coverage due to the COVID-19 pandemic and you think you may be eligible for Medicare, you probably have more questions than answers right now. Statewide Insurers Group, All Things Medicare, can help you with that. We can provide the guidance and the answers that you need to get the benefits you may be eligible for. 
Don't let this time of uncertainty jeopardize your eligibility for your Medicare benefits. Remember, relationships matter. Call Statewide Insurers Group today for the answers that you need now. 316-8166. Being prepared and trained is the best way to keep your family safe. The best way to be prepared is to learn from those who've spent a lifetime protecting us. Barnes Safety and Consulting LLC offers concealed carry classes with instructors who are law enforcement officers active and retired with more than 100 years of law enforcement experience. Monthly classes are taught year round with private classes and special group rates available. Classes are $75 and held in the Bailey area. Call or text 1-800-653-0643. Get your concealed carry permit and avoid becoming a victim. Okay, welcome back. Um, first case we want to talk about, we've talked about this before, but we hope one day somebody's going to call us about this case because Tammy Grady, it's a Wilson case, 11-28-2019. Um, it's very recent. I mean, 2019 is recent as far as the case files are concerned because some of these cases go back for years and years and years. Tammy Grady was reported missing by her family. Her date of disappearance is listed as November 28, 2019. However, Tammy had not been in contact with family for a week prior to that. It is possible that she w was missing before the 28th of November. Her sister, Christy Ruffin, who came on here, she came on here and she appealed, please, and she was crying, please, somebody, please tell me about my sister. Do you know anything about my sister? All I want is closure for us. She said, we can't sleep, you know, every Christmas, every Christmas, because it happened November 28th, every Christmas we go through torture without my sister. So this is, you saw the emotion of that one family member. So this is how important it is for us to be doing this. So, um, And she's her, got a familiar look. Yes, yeah, she does, don't she? She does. Her sister, Christy Ruffin, had last spoken to Tammy by phone on 11-23, which was about a week, like they said. Um, Tammy had not contacted anyone in her family since that time, namely her sister Christy or her younger brother Horace, who she remains almost in daily contact. They were close. They were very close family members. Um, there have there have been no transactions on Tammy's EBT card since 11-23-2019. So the last day that they talked to her was the last day she used her debit card. So, and they talked every day. So it's almost like, you know, that's the date mm -hmm. that it happened, almost. Um, nor has there been any activity on her social media. And she did talk on social media, which is, um, they said that's unusual. It's been one of her, Tammy's primary ways of communication was, uh, was Facebook. Tammy was using the cell phone of Dario Santos, whom she had recently started staying with at 806 LV Street in Wilson. Santos advised shortly after midnight, Tammy left with Patrick Highsmith to go to uh, a local motel, which was the heart of Wilson. Uh, we all have seen that. Neither of these men have been uh, named a suspect at this point. Tammy's sister, Christy Ruffin, has been begging for answers in her disappearance. She has accepted that Tammy may have been hurt, but just wants to know where she is so she can be in peace. There have been tips on her disappearance, and Wilson Police Department uh, is working on those tips. Grady is five foot four feet tall, weighs 120 pounds, weighed 120 pounds, and has brown hair and blue eyes. So what happened was, um, the report and the information that Lyndall had, she went to a party. Um, she got in a cab at the Heart of Wilson Hotel. She got in a cab. She went to the party, never to be seen again. Um, they think that the person that was having the party 
is the one that might have done something to her is what they think so um, the cab driver the interesting thing is the cat they asked the cab driver where did you drop her off I can't remember how do you not remember if you drove somebody uh, really at, you picked them up at the Heart of Wilson Hotel you don't know where you dropped them off yeah that goes over into my odd category that's very odd it is and so then the theory from the police the theory was that he was scared he's scared he was scared but here's the thing he just died he just passed away cab driver that's, 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 a, that's unfortunate it is but they never could get him he said I just can't remember where I dropped her off so then some other people have said was he in on it then was he in on it so I mean this is a you very think he was involved in in some shape form or fashion or he is he knows this a bad situation he's scared to death yes yes and so their hope of ever getting an answer out of the cab driver has gone because he did pass away only about as a matter of fact when Christy was here telling her story which wasn't that long ago she said he just died last week before that so she was very upset about that because that was their hope but anyway her body is somewhere is somewhere or not she's living somewhere but um, I think the police suspect more that her body is somewhere and they and and we had the uh, body that was found down here on Sunset Avenue we had a body found not long ago I'd say three months ago um, if you know where Tar Heel Auto was and Wires Inc and the convenient mart right beside Wires um, it was right there there's a side road that turns and goes around and the body was found right there well did um, it had to be sent off nobody it couldn't be identified evidently it had been there a while um, so um, when it was sent off you know people were saying um, even Lyndall we were all saying I wonder if that's Tammy Grady is that Tammy Grady is that Tammy Grady you know and so it come back and the police department told us no can't be Tammy Grady it's a male so that shot that down but you know everybody's looking for Tammy Grady's body and I'm hope I'm very hopeful that um, if anybody knows now people do know things in this case absolutely they know things no doubt about it they know things in every case but there's got to be several people that know things in this case because it was a party yeah. I mean you know people yeah. attend a party there had to have been five or six or seven people at the party at and least able to establish a timeline and you know uh, rule people out as suspects and then yeah. kind of keep a pool of you know yeah there's definitely people who know things that attended that party yeah I wonder what their motive would have been to get rid of her though I mean I've always wondered you know you, what the motive would have been but that's a very interesting case so if anybody knows anything 406-6736 we would appreciate you coming forth um, okay let's go back and talk about I want to mention Randy Colgrove this is another Nash County case that Jeff Sherrod has talked about um, this gentleman apparently um, lived off the road a little bit on Bachelor Road you know where Bachelor mm -hmm. Road is um, so um, he was it doesn't give a lot of details in our book but Nash County Sheriff's Office responded to a person laying in the driveway of a home on Highway 58 well it's it's on I don't know why it says that because in Sandy Cross near Vivert Road 
Well, it's over by Bachelor Road, I can tell you that. I thought it was on Bachelor Road. But anyway, uh, it says near Vibrant Road, outside of Nashville. Once on the scene, they found Randy Colgrove deceased from gunshot wounds. He was a very popular barber. Yes, he was. You brought mm-hmm. that up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He was. He worked in Wilson at two different barber shops that I would get my hair cut at. He really? Was, he was a great guy. Um, a cut up, I mean, just a, a wonderful person to be around. Um, and when I found this out, I mean, I was distraught. I mean, because he's not someone that you would think would have enemies. Yeah. You know. Um, I don't know if the motive, I'm trying to remember what Jeff said. He, um, the Nash County Sheriff's Department will be with us next week, and we're going to definitely ask him about this case. Um, I do understand that they feel like they're getting a little maybe close to uh, solving it, but. Um, let's hope so, but um, they don't know the motive. I can't remember if they said anything was missing. I believe he was robbed, but I can't really remember. Um, and I'm getting a text, so I'm going to check it to make sure it's not Nash County because some they do watch, and sometimes they will let me know information. So, um, no, that wasn't them. So, But we'll ask about that. His... I think his house is kind of off the road. I think it was a mobile home, from what I remember. And it was kind of off the road. So um, his body probably wasn't found immediately, but it was found in the driveway. Um, It makes me wonder, what was he doing outside? Did he go outside to confront somebody? Did he go outside to visit with somebody? I I believe, from what I understand, he tried, he ran out of the house and tried to, they were in his house. Home invasion. Home invasion. It was a home invasion. In his house, he tried to chase them. Yep. He ran out. Don't do it, y'all. Don't chase them. Don't just do what they say. Maybe give them what they want, you know, if they're asking for any of your possessions. Please just give it to them, right? Mm -hmm. Don't chase them. But anyway, I think that's what happened, and somewhere in the driveway, they got him, mm-hmm. evidently. But yeah, this was a home invasion. So um, details on that next week. That's been a case that a lot of people have been interested in. I've had a lot of comments on because he was so well known. Yeah, everybody you know. knew him. Yeah. So anyway, um, now I want to also talk about. We remember. Tammy Pierce, um, Selby Outland, Paul Pierce, Nicole Privet. Um, t- we talked about that, and and that was that would be a good segment for us to play. That Lindell, when Lindell did that, because we don't have enough space in the book to talk about the details of that case. I mean, it was so involved. It's another Wilson case. Um, in a very interesting case. So um, we're going to take our break before we get into that one. Um, go over to the weather and we'll be right back. If you recently lost your job and your health coverage due to the COVID-19 pandemic, and you think you may be eligible for Medicare, you probably have more questions than answers right now. Statewide Insurers Group, All Things Medicare, can help you with that. We can provide the guidance and the answers that you need to get the benefits you may be eligible for. Don't let this time of uncertainty jeopardize your eligibility for your Medicare benefits. Remember, relationships matter. Call Statewide Insurers Group today for the answers that you need now. 316-8166.
Being prepared and trained is the best way to keep your family safe. The best way to be prepared is to learn from those who've spent a lifetime protecting us. Barnes Safety and Consulting LLC offers concealed carry classes with instructors who are law enforcement officers active and retired with more than 100 years of law enforcement experience. Monthly classes are taught year-round with private classes and special group rates available. Classes are $75 and held in the Bailey area. Call or text 1-800-653-0643. Get your concealed carry permit and avoid becoming a victim. Okay. Um, JP and I were talking. Um, I, I think we're going to wait for Tammy Pierce next week because I want to, there's a lot of details with that. And that was the quadruple murder in Wilson. Um, and we were talking almost execution style. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it was just terrible. You remember that case when we talked about it, I'm sure a lot of you. But we're going to go back over the details next week. I will get Lyndall kind of, um, and, and I'll talk to Lyndall and get some, uh, some more information. But there's lots to talk about on that. Um, so we'll do that next week. But I want to talk about the baby John Nash. Y'all remember this. We've talked about this too. But I understand that they may be getting information on this case now. Um, as you just said, people get older. People talk. People are ready to to kind of clear their conscience and as you know they're getting older so um, anyway we're hoping that they're going to be able to solve this and that would be amazing after how many years did we say about 14 yeah 14 years um, at 1 15 p.m. a homeless man was searching the dumpster behind the food line on Harbor West I remember the story distinctly when it happened when he came across a Cheetos bucket when he saw the Cheetos bucket, he saw, he saw what he thought was a doll. He picked it up by the leg and realized it was a real baby. He notified law enforcement the baby was in the bucket butt first. Material that appeared to be a sheet that was covered in blood was found balled up in the corner of the dumpster. Rocky Mountain Police Department started investigating, revealed that the newborn was a white male, possibly born around 2-5-2007, and still had his umbilical cord attached. Around the umbilical cord was an elastic hairband. Another elastic hairband was around the baby's neck. Under the hairband, a long brown piece of hair was found and submitted into evidence. There was dirt and granular matter on the newborn and in his mouth and an abrasion on his chest. The medical examiner noticed that the baby was alive, noted that the baby was alive at one time. So the baby was born alive. He had air in his stomach and lungs, which was evidence of a live birth. The Cheetos bucket was not sold in the Rocky Mountain area at the time. It was sold in northern states. Now, I hadn't even thought about that. I hadn't took that in. Wow. Okay. Law enforcement named him Baby John Nash. Baby, Baby Nash weighed 7 pounds, 5 ounces, and was, a near, was nearly 21 inches long. He was a full-term baby. Brown hair. For the last 14 years, the only evidence to go on was the Cheetos bucket and the sheet with blood. That is until Ancestry DNA became quite, well, quite, I think it's not, I'll turn the page. Rocky Mountain PD announced February 2020 that they were submitting DNA to find family members of baby John Nash. Oh, well, I bet some DNA came back. I bet Don't it did, you? too. <gasps> they have not released their findings as of yet, but hopefully, we're hoping, people, that this will, you know, that hair, what I else? I guarantee you they got a hit. Oh, wow, yeah. to at least find the family members. Mm -hmm. And then work it backwards. They have not released their findings. The mother would have been pregnant around May through May to June, of 2006 through January of 2007. The mother could have been from up north 
where the Cheetos bucket was sold, or it could have been coincidence. If you know someone who was pregnant around that time and did not have a baby, report it, it says. So, yeah, I mean, people know, you know, a, a woman is pregnant, you're expecting the baby, you know, you want to see what it looks like, what did you name it? Well, no baby. No baby. Yeah. So, a boyfriend, a husband, a fiance, you know, I mean, yeah. I would be asking questions. Yeah, a lot of people knew she was pregnant because, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, that's Mama's nine aunts, months, mm -hmm. you know? So, yeah. um, anyway, this is a very interesting case. DNA evidence uh, has been stepped up. This, this day and time, they can really do some interesting things with hair, mm -hmm. I understand. I think Officer Seifman talked about that um, a little bit, the advancements that mm -hmm. they have made with hair. Um, so that this case might be on the verge, we hope, of being solved. So if anybody knows anything, there's the number right there, 406-6736. It is anonymous, people. I can't say that enough. Um, Next case I want to talk about, um, I remember distinctly because Herb and I went to the scene and um, were there quite a while trying to decipher and take some pictures and things. Leona Johnson and Deborah Shriven. Leona Johnson, who was 50 years old at the time, was secretary to the Rocky Mount Police Department's Uniform Division for three years. When she failed to show up for work, Rocky Mount Police went to her house. Um, so, I don't know what's wrong with this book. Anyway, they went to her house on Compass Creek Drive, and I'll tell you where Compass Creek is. Compass Creek is down Gold Rock Road. If you're coming from this way, going down Gold Rock Road, it's on the left. There's a street right there on the left. Um, is, is where this happened. In Rocky Mount, um, Compass Creek in Rocky Mount to check on her. When they arrived, they found a broken glass in the back door of the residence. Police made entry into the home and found Leona Johnson and her friend Deborah Shriven, 44 years old at the time, shot to death. Deborah's son, Devin Shriven, was also in the home and shot and rushed to the hospital where he remained in critical condition, but recovered. Police say that the shooting happened between 3.45 a.m. and 9.45 a.m. the morning of the 21st. All three were found shot in three different rooms of the residence. Police stated that it was not a random incident and that they all likely knew their killer. In September 2008, Devin Scriven was staying at the Hal Orr's Motel in Rocky Mount when his brother Antonio Matthew, with his brother Antonio Matthews, Antonio shot his brother three times and killed him. Ten months, um, Devin was the only witness to the murders on, on Compass Creek just ten months prior. Wow. Mm. Well, um, witnesses I'm already saw, drawing my own conclusions. Yes, over here on this, this one's pretty. Witnesses saw two people leave the scene, however, only Antonio Matthews was ever charged. Antonio Matthews was arrested and charged with first degree murder. In 2011, he went to trial and the judge declared a mistrial. Golly day, you hate it when this happens. The district attorney had planned to charge him again, but with second degree murder. Matthews decided to plead guilty to manslaughter in June of 2012 and was sentenced to five years. However, he was released eight months later and put on parole. Murdered, yep. committed murder, and is a free man. Is in, a free in man. Eight months, and people wonder what's wrong with law enforcement, and the criminal justice system in North Absolutely. Carolina. Absolutely. You know, and you were a state trooper, and so you, you know, state patrol is just as susceptible or more because they're on the highway. Um, but, you know, you, you risk your life. You go out there, and this is, Sheriff Stone has said this so many times on this show. You risk your life to go out there, and you arrest people, and you put them behind bars for bad acts for things that they have done and 
two months later, six months later, whenever they go to court a year later, they get out. And you try not to get, you, you try not to let things like this get under your skin. But from a law enforcement perspective, say what you want, the officers who worked this case, he was charged with murder, then second degree murder, murder, and he pulled eight months. Yeah, that's right. This is where politics is involved in law enforcement, and it is a dirty, I mean, it, it's, 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 it's just, just wrong. dirty. It's wrong. It's wrong. It is so wrong. Well, um, this case was unfortunate because I had, um, <clears throat> this lady, you know, was a very pleasant Leona Johnson, the work for the police department. I had talked to her two or three times, you know, on the phone, just very pleasant. When I was, you, you know, you would ask for this person or that person when we, when I called down there, she would answer the phone and she was very pleasant lady. So what a shame that this would happen. Um, but yeah, let go, got out, whatever. And this is probably going to be a situation where she was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Yes, I think so. And um, just got caught up in a situation where she wasn't a target, but she was made a target because yes, she was at home. That's exactly right. They think drugs was mm -hmm. probably, um, I think they suspect, a drug situation there. Um, and whoever that killer was didn't like knowing that um, he was still walking around alive. Yeah, he knowing lived. That he could, that's right, that he could ID the, the real killer. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's pure common sense yeah. stuff we're reading right here. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, these are some of the cases that um, we wanted to bring today to jar your memory. If you know anything, please help. Um, don't forget the Linda Lawrence is out there, the girl at the pool on, in High Meadows, um, went to the pool, left the pool, never to be seen again, car in Meadowbrook, um, over on, um, at Meadowbrook Park, never to be, she's never seen again. All of her possessions were in the car. So, don't forget that case as well. We talked about that last week. Um, and we're hoping Nash County um, will fill us in on Randy Colgrave. I'm sure um, Jeff Sherrod will do that next week. Got some um, some really interesting cases too that are not in the book. So, and if you've not, I want to talk about the book a little bit. If you've not gotten one of these, see me please if you want one. Some, it's an interesting read. It's a good read. So I'll be glad to give you one if you want to come by. Um, any board member can give you one. So um, just let us know if you would like one. We'll be glad to. It's, it's, and we're going to put out another one. This was a fundraiser. So if you do pick one up, <coughs> you know, if you want to drop us $5, $10 donation, something like that, that would be nice. Um, just a small donation for the book. So that this was, like I said, this was a fundraiser for us to replenish our funds. Now, also we need to talk about um, the fact that I haven't mentioned today, it's up to, we pay out up to $15,000. Um, your, your payout comes very fast. I mean, within 20, 24 to 48 hours, you will have a check. Um, no questions asked. So if, if you, um, if, if the police department, they grade it to see how, how um, important this tip was to them solving the case and you're paid accordingly, but it will be up to 15,000. We have to replenish our funds, so we do have to have fundraisers. So um, we'll be putting out another book probably in I'd say four to five months. We'll write some more cases up. Um, there's bunches of cases that we've talked about on here that just did not, we just didn't have time to put in the book. So we're going to go to book number two. So anyway, that's, uh, that's what it's all about, folks. Helping to solve 
these crimes and bring closure to families. I mean, that's what we're about. So, and I think you've enjoyed being involved, haven't you, JP? I have. I, I really enjoy this. I have learned so much. I have been too. In law enforcement for 30 years, there were so many cases in this book that I had I'd never heard about. Right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So anyway. Um, Please watch the K-Files. We um, rerun the show. Brittany, when do we rerun the show? Friday night. At 10? Yeah. Yeah, Friday night at 10 o'clock. You can see it again. We have it on YouTube. So at any time, you can type in WHIG YouTube page, and it's certainly there so you can see it. So um, there's no excuse. You can always see the K-Files. So make it a great day, everybody. Thank you, JP. Thanks for having me. Thank you to all of our sponsors for the K-Files um, and on WHIG for the morning show. We want to thank all of our sponsors for making all of this possible um, that we do every day on the morning show. So anyway, make it a great day. If you recently lost your job and your health coverage due to the COVID-19 pandemic and you think you may be eligible for Medicare, you probably have more questions than answers right now. Statewide Insurers Group, All Things Medicare, can help you with that. We can provide the guidance and the answers that you need to get the benefits you may be eligible for. Don't let this time of uncertainty jeopardize your eligibility for your Medicare benefits. Remember. Relationships matter. Call Statewide Insurers Group today for the answers that you need now. 316-8166. Being prepared and trained is the best way to keep your family safe. The best way to be prepared is to learn from those who've spent a lifetime protecting us. Barnes Safety and Consulting LLC offers concealed carry classes with instructors who are law enforcement officers active and retired with more than 100 years of law enforcement experience. Monthly classes are taught year round with private classes and special group rates available. Classes are $75 and held in the Bailey area. Call or text 1-800-653-0643. Get your concealed carry permit and avoid becoming a victim.